session 50 of the Pi Friends Five in up. the uh, Frostnard Saga. Uh, session 50 is titled Welcome to the Jungle. And uh, unfortunately, due to copyright law, uh, that will not have any accompanying theme music. So, recap on session 49. Uh, it saw the group heroically fight to save the good fortune from certain destruction at the hands of the Shadow's Hand cult and Griffin bombers. Uh, they uh, fought off all the cultists, uh, killed several Griffin, and uh, saved the ship from burning. And the ship limped into the Silent Coal, which is an area of the land of Akul, where Seal Clubber had uh, anchored before and had mentioned it was safe anchorage for his ship. Now, after arriving on the island, uh, you're about to disembark, and that's where we're going to pick up. Do, 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 do. Welcome okay. to the jungle. So, uh, Shut up! you are in the northwest of the island in Silent Cove. Uh, you, you, from your position uh, to the south, you can see a mm. uh, expansive mountain range that stretches uh, across the horizon. Now you know that the lost city of Half is on the other side of that expan uh, that mountain range, somewhere in the southeastern portion of the light island. Uh, and if you speak to either uh, uh, Janelle or to Jorvik, uh, you will be shown. Uh, well, Janelle will describe it, but Jorvik will show you this map. So that's what the island looked like. Uh, when Cain, the last herald, was still alive. So green and fertile, which it is anything but now. It is a frozen hellscape. Hope everybody's brought cold weather gear. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Okay, so uh, first thing that will happen is Seal Clubber will meet you on deck and uh, will say that uh, he told you he could get you here and that uh, if you're ready, uh, he and his men will accompany you to a shore and they plan to set up camp at the Silent Cove and await for your return. Sounds like a great idea. Hmm. Looking at the map, I'm just trying to think of the best way to make it down there. Uh, I think we need to go up and down. Or is it flung up? We can we can go up, but it will take us a lot longer to make our way round. Or we can go down and try and ford the river at the narrow point. Yeah, yeah. I think you you lose a couple of rivers that way, but yeah. I think, yeah, literally heading. Does uh, Steel Club have a small boat on this ship? Is it worth getting a boat? Is that going to help for at all? Uh, he has rowboats. Uh, there are two of them, and that's what he's offering to row you to shore in. Yeah. Uh, well, it's uh, not inconceivable for you to carry them. They're not. Uh, they're quite wide, and it would be quite difficult, especially in either mountainous or sort of like jungle or forest terrain, to carry it. Like you need something yeah. a lot thinner, generally. Yeah, they're the, the designed as kind of life rafts, so they'll take like 15, maybe 10 people or something like that, probably. Uh, not so much life raft, but like tran transport, so uh, to mm -hmm. like, ship to shore. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yeah, I would say just forge, forge down the northern side of the um, of the mountains, and uh, well, and then just... the right sort of area forward into the mountain range to get close to where we actually need to go. I'm I'm assuming we want to go to that dot. Yeah, the, it's that little mountain that's in the. Yeah, see see all where all the small mountains end, and then you get to the three big peaks. Mm -hmm. there's, it, there's a there's a kind of a gap between there. Is that a possibility? What do we actually we want? Probably to? won't know until we find, get there, really. Yeah. The 
the pastor's car address. Yeah, that that path. Who's Caladrus? The evil mountain spirit in Lord of the Rings. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm just flexing my uh, my nerdy knowledge. Okay. I was just about to ask Jordvik. <laughs> there were voices on the wind. <laughs> that was made up for the film. Yeah. So? It doesn't stop that being nerdy. Um, right. Yeah. We just start hexing then. So, like I said, we've got two options. We either drop on the north side of the river and we make our way round the sort of, we go south, north from here. We round the top of the peaks and then we head southwest and then southeast when we can. Yeah. Or we drop south of the river, make our way through the jungle. That would be my... Kathar, my... make a survival check. Okay, so uh, while it's your first time here, uh, you are obviously uh, used to trekking across rough ground. Now, you don't think you'll have any dif difficulty finding like ways to fall the rivers either like as long as you're kind of away from the coast you're pretty comfortable you'll be able to find a way across uh, mm -hmm. likewise with uh the hills to the west of your immediate landing zone and sort of some of the peaks to the south you're kind of confident that you could you know it'll be slow going but you could cut across them the the three biggest peaks on the map uh you believe that it would be uh like folly to try and scale at that point but ev everywhere else, you kind of like you're confident in your abilities that you will be able to find a way through. Okay, so we need to be south of the mountains before we hit the big peaks, based on Kassar's knowledge. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, like passing passing over them is going to be a bad idea. Yeah, so you can kind of infer from that. Yeah, the, yeah. The my... Ground level is pretty like frozen and horrible. Uh, you uh, you shudder at the thought of the the coldest of the peaks. I'm gonna say to the to the group that I I believe that we should land south of the river and head south from there. Yeah, that that sounds good to me. Onwards. From what the map says, it's a quicker route. And I can take us through the jungle. The frozen jungle. I'm in the jungle. Let's go. This is a cold jungle. Yes. <laughs> frozen stay. It Very can good. happen. Yeah. It's as if the, the local climate changed uh much quicker than the uh than the terrain could adapt yeah the flora could have adapted flora 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 Hit it both it's right there's there's historical president of frozen forests yeah but i don't think they have leaves on them yeah no <laughs> yeah <laughs> so a, a few of the maps will look green. You're just going to have to pretend it's cold and horrible. Okay, it's cold and horrible, guys. It's very cold here. Ooh, I'm glad I got my cold weather gear. So uh, you are rolled ashore now. Uh, if you ask to be dropped off elsewhere, Silk will be... Uh, it's a, tells you that uh, this is the best landing zone uh, on this side of the island, so this is where he'll, he'll put the boats down. Now, uh, he will mention that this river's nearby for fresh water, and uh, that it's fairly secure, and that uh, over the course of the next sort of hour or so, they're going to land some supplies and set up a camp up on the, the sort of the cliffs above you. No time to start like the present, I suppose. Yeah, no time to lose. Let's get uh, let's get hiking. Get gear on, lads. Yep, go with the gear equipped. Yep, 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 yep. Ooh, buildings. 
crown. You look at the statue. It's pretty. It's got a light on it. You can turn set light to it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, if, if you mention the statue, uh, Silk Hubbard will tell you that uh, he, he thinks this was a, an outpost or a colony at some point, and uh, the statue uh, he believes is, is some sort of lighthouse. Uh, I'd like uh, you all just to make a, a general perception for a sort of like a cursory glance around the ruins, if you would. Yeah. Is there a quick way to get to the... Double click your token. Uh -huh, okay. Yeah, so uh, as you look around, you can see that the ruins are, are quite aged. The There's vines and roots growing through them. Uh, they're crumbling away at the foundations. Now, Duvar and Cluck, uh, in addition to this, you can see that uh, the signs of uh, like like an old campfire, uh, as if somebody had uh, used this location uh, on times of the past. Uh, Cluck, furthermore, you will notice that the, the statue, while... Uh, it's kind of the the humanoid shaped is humanoid and doesn't have much uh, much to suggest uh, anything other than just like a, a shape. You can see that there are two broken like uh, segments coming off uh, near its shoulders, and you suspect that this statue at one point probably had wings. I'm fairly certain it was probably some sort of Arrow Cochrane statue at some point in its uh, stony life. Would, would make sense, I suppose, given where we are. Um, David, can I do a, like a more like hard investigation of this statue? Sure. Yeah. Uh, what are you uh, doing slash looking for? I'm trying to discern whether, like he thought it was some sort of lighthouse. I'm trying to discern if there's if there's anything special about it, any magic, any anything that that might, um, yeah, be out of the ordinary, other than just being like a statue that might hold a fire. Okay, uh, sure. Uh, make a investigation check. I know nothing. <laughs> As per uh, usual. You you get a sense of old mystique, uh, either from the the area you're in or the statue. It's very difficult for you to tell, but uh, there's a suggestion that, that this was uh, something much more at some point. Okay. But it's like a, a fleeting feeling more than like evidence. You just feel it in your gut. Yeah. It's cool. It's cool. A, a thing that you like, don't you just pull it? Isn't that the usual trick? If it's if it's a puzzle, <laughs> don't think it's a puzzle though. Everything's a puzzle. Everything, everything's a puzzle. I investigate this bush. It's, it's, a, it's a puzzle. How do you survive this long? It's awesome. Tell me about this bush. Oh. Uh. You're you're not sure whether you have ever seen a bush before. <laughs> Green? That's not the right colour for a bush. <laughs> ah yes. Um, yeah. you roll a dice. Uh, yeah. Now, based on your two, you you think the bush uh has some sort of medicinal properties, and you start rubbing it over your body, uh, only to find out it's some oh. sort of poison ivy. Oh. <laughs> And you are now itchy for the next two hours. Oh, Dave, this um, this building that me and Kassar just had a quick like, wander around. Is there anything obvious to us other than what we can just see on the map? Uh, based on your uh, combined checks, no. Okay. I guess tell the others that we should press on. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll just sort of mention a pop He's... statue looking like a what's probably an Eric Cochran statue. Well, the then we're world. in the wrong. We're in the right place, but we we must push on. We have no time to lose. Looks like it's long. Fell into ruin. We already know the 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 cult is here, don't we? The cult's here somewhere. That's a uh, a good uh... assumption. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very good assumption given uh, what you've seen. It's yeah, it's not just an assumption. We we found their notes, didn't we, with, with the uh, the diagram with the cultist camps. Yes, you did. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start heading off north. Yeah, I will I will follow Kassar. Okay. Whistling a jaunty tune. We're wailers on the moon. We carry a harpoon. So I guess we just we want to go southish until we hit the mountains. That, that's the plan, isn't it? Roughly at the minute. We're going yeah. north. When? No, we're we north. agreed going south. We just said I'm heading north. Yeah, that, was that was all. We're heading out of the end of the map. Okay. Let's all follow Captain's sense of direction. Uh, yeah. Just... So yeah, so David, we will we will head south-ish towards that the is, Yeah, southwest for the sake of the hex. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, a few things for. You bear with me one moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, because this he hex is quite open, uh, it will uh, uncover the next ones for you. Uh, and you have a, a few choices here. So you uh, need to choose uh, A, who your navigator is, and B, uh, what speed you want to uh, travel at. So uh, each hex uh, will generally, at normal speed, will take two hours to cross. Uh, you can go mm -hmm. slower for an extra hour, but it means you can't get lost and you also obviously have advantages on uh, stealth and ambushing. Or you can go faster, where uh, it will take an hour less. Uh, there's a greater chance you will get lost and uh, you have disadvantage on stealth and spotting ambushes. So, okay, well, I, I would say, please correct me, but guys, we know there's cultists here, so we're probably likely to do the slow careful option and Kassar's likely to be the one in the lead. Would everyone agree with that? Do you not remember what happened last time? I think we should take in turns. Well, I would hope that we had learned. Certain people had learned since last time. It's the pie friends. We never learn. <laughs> what are you talking about? Learn I am something. much better at these things now. And actually, we should be able to move a a, fast, a sort of a normal pace in the forest. So you could be in... if we if we take it relatively quickly. I don't mind who leads, but once we're in the forest, it would make no sense if I didn't. Yeah, I I would say also like with your like survival like like knowledge and stuff like it would make sense that we would trust you to guide us. Like unless anyone in this character really wants to jump out and volunteer. Oh, you're only as good volunteer. as the choice. Sorry, I didn't get either of those two. No, I'm as good as the dice, uh, as the dice, and Duvo will always volunteer. <laughs> get us lost. Uh, I mean, if Duvo's adamant, then I'll let him get do it until we get to the forest. Yeah. Go At on. that point, I would I would insist that that is that is my ground. I will happily uh, allow you to take over at the at the forest. Okay. Go ahead, Duvo. In which case, I will I will move to the back of the column. Okay, so uh, for the first hex, it's fine. So this is kind of like a base hex. Nothing bad can happen to you here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> see, success already. And you, <laughs> you travel did southwest. Have to roll. <laughs> yeah, that's southwestern hex. Southwest. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, while you're on fairly open ground, it's going to be an hour at normal speed to cross hexes, uh, and you will uncover. So you can see uh, the river you spotted from the ship uh, ahead of you in the distance. Excellent. So where are we going, Duvar? Where should we'll we head follow, next? Should we? We'll follow the coastline. Um, 
and cross the, the at the mouth of the river. Uh, and oh, did sorry, did you say you wanted to go north and then, or did you want to stay this side of the range? We're staying this side of the range. Okay. We all, David also suggested that we'll find it easier to ford the rivers inland rather than on the coast. Kazar suggested yeah. that through his expertise. Yes, he did. Oh, but... did he? Okay. All right, then we'll follow the river in. Why not? You can ignore me. You are the guide. Yeah. You make the yes, decisions, Duvar. Uh, Duvar, point, uh, at, point at a hex. Um, point at a hex. Uh, how do I do that? Hex, that click. That, that one? Uh, the, the red one. The one with the red one. Yeah, sorry, that was uh, all fast colour. Yeah. Okay. How do How's I do it? my colour? Uh, hold X, there you go. That's not me. That's me. There you go. That's me, that's me. There you go. Okay. I, I already don't like all the, all the, the, the hidden rolling. I hate it. I hate everything about it. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a lot of it, so... Yep, uh, so of course for the next it. hour, uh, you travel further south, and you reach the river. Excellent. Right. Um, what does the river look like to us? Is it crossable? Uh, yeah, so you've got like a two-mile stretch in front of you in your hex, so uh, it's... Make, make, a, make a survival check, do that. Yep, you you, uh, you navigate across the hex and find a uh, part of the river that you think can be easily forded. Uh, mm. You kind of forget for the moment, uh, for a, sorry, a brief moment that you're the only one that can breathe water. Uh, I just fly over the river. You can certainly fly over the river, uh, but you will find a, a more than safe spot to cross. Excellent. So if we go to... Um... Was it X? Go to that square next. Oh, a hex next. Uh, just want to make another survival check for me. Yeah. Okay, uh, you cross the river without incident and you end up on the edge of a frozen jungle. There you go. Uh, this is where I p uh, call Kazar over and say, hey, your jungle, sir. Oh, yes. Would you like to take over? Absolutely. Which is where Natural Explorer will come into actual usefulness. Crit fail. <laughs> <laughs> so what Natural Explorer should do, uh, should, let me see if should, I can should. find it. In here, it's ensure that we don't we go. keep going around in circles. So it should mean we, that we can't get lost, <laughs> and that we can move stealthily at a normal pace. So it should increase our pace if we want to be careful. We can't get lost uh... unless by magical means. Mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, remain alert to danger while um, essentially foraging or navigating or elsewhere. Oh, the stealth of the Achi is only if I'm alone, so we can't do that. Okay. And very good at tracking. Yes. Yes. Which way yeah. is that? Uh, we'll continue in the in the vein that we were doing. We'll go this way. Okay. And, uh, uh, survival check, and I believe uh, in your favour terrain, you also get to double your uh, proficiency bonus. How does that work with expertise, though? Uh, so you can, uh, I I would think you add in expertise already doubles it, so you would add another set of proficiency to it, so you won't quadruple it. Yeah, it would just add another, so it'll be that plus three, so it'll yeah. be twelve. Okay. Okay. Are uh, you moving to the jungle? At this we... point, uh, you will not uncover uh, neighbouring hexes. Okay. Um, as as we go, I'll probably start to look at the the sort of the new flora and fauna, see if it's any different to what I'm used to, and uh, investigate it a little bit. So just sort of 
forage anything interesting as we go. Uh, I suppose we'll we'll head to this hex next. Oh, I hate that. Mimi probably ride, rolled some dice. I don't know. You're going to have to get used to that. that. Uh, survival check again, please. There's nothing wrong so there's going to be a survival check every time you pick a location. Nope. <laughs> that is a 13. Better than the last one, so it's fine. Things will happen. Yes. But hopefully, in, in a good way. way. Yes. Yes. But uh, the important thing is. Go sorry, on. go on. After you, sir. Okay. The important thing is, it didn't happen to me. Yet. <laughs> it didn't happen to. Give it. Give it time. <laughs> when when yeah. Duval was in the lead. <laughs> so as you're uh, traveling through the jungle, uh, it's quite, it's quite going, but Kassar seems to be able to uh, navigate you through the easier parts. Uh, you will all start to notice that the, the sun is uh, starting to uh, dip behind the mountains and hills to your west. Sun's getting real low. Okay, shall I head Shall I head southwest and get us more towards the mountains to make a little base camp? Yeah. Uh, yeah, trust, trust your judgment, mate. Let this, me... this hex next then, please. If you ask Ulfar, he'll just shrug. He's got no idea. <laughs> yep, two seconds. I've just checked my notes and I had a note to fix Cluck's damage. There's, uh, there's a definite advantage to having one th solid thing at your rear and having the jungle in front of us, whereas if we're surrounded, we don't know what's in the jungles. Uh, can I get a... Uh... Survival? Yes. I'm going to start rolling it manually so I don't have to just say plus three every time. Perfect. 26. Okay. Mm. And it gets further uh, into the evening and you, you reckon you've probably got... Um, Maybe one more hex before you start to lose the light. I mean, it's summer, so uh, it does last uh, a bit longer. But you yep. think you'll lose it shortly. I will go. In that case, we'll go southwest again. So we'll go through here. I'm going to hit the mountains. I think that'll get us that'll get us close enough to the mountains to be able to camp at the the foot. Yeah. Our survival piece. Oh, you can yeah. you can start doing these automatically as long as you're a man. Thirteen. It's a good thing that the plus is so high because I'm yeah, rolling I, so badly. Yeah, the, the rolling's been iffy at best. Yep, so uh, you will uh, break cover, so over the next two hours you'll break cover from the jungle and start climbing uh, upwards, and I will uh, now clear some hexes around you. So we're in between the two, the, the large mountain and the smaller mountains. I don't think we're in, we're at the base of the mountain on the left. Of yeah, so, so the mountain uh, that you can see on the right of your token is one of the tall peaks. Okay. We yeah. could. Well, this is a good place to camp because we've got a couple of solid sides, yeah. sort of either side of us, and the forest in front of us. So we only really have. We need a perimeter on the north side, really. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, settle down and, and build a camp as best we can. Yeah, I think so. Any sheltering wall we can find. We'll try and find sort of a natural, a natural sort of outcrop, mm. and uh, sort of put ourselves away for the night, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we're not on open ground. If yeah. everyone is okay with that, yeah, yeah, making sure our backs towards the wall or something, or towards a cliff face, or I'm good with yeah, that. okay, and uh, no rocks are going to drop on us. Survival check. Uh, nope, that'll be fine. Uh, is there anything else okay. you'd like to do? 
uh, um, before, just the, like, the results camp. of the foraging as we walk through. Okay, yeah. uh, make a survival check for that, please. 26. Oh, I didn't good. add my proficiency to that one, uh, my extra proficiency to that one. I don't know if it works for that. Uh, as long as it's oh, in no, yeah. it should do. Yeah, it should be. So that will be a 29 then. Cool. Oh. Okay, uh, you will find, uh, let's see, a number of uh, mushrooms and other things that uh, look quite edible. Some berries, uh, uh, enough, uh, so you'll find four plus uh, your wisdom modifier in pounds of food. Of I guess which, that's five. Yep, yeah, which is enough to feed, so each person needs a pound of food to avoid eating their rations. Okay, cool. I, I feed everyone my delicious concoction of mushrooms and berries and all sorts. Uh, I'd say with a 29, animals are running out and dying in front of, in front of your feet, to be honest. <laughs> They're literally having heart attacks in front of you. Okay. I'll say that uh, this food tastes uh, a million times better than the, the crap you dished up last time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The time before last time, the last time I served you all roast pig. You yeah, ungrateful then, wretches. And then it was cat before that. <laughs> You're all ungrateful wretches. That's all I'll say. Yeah, the I other, feed you well. The other thing you find as you're uh, sort of foraging uh, on your way, you found a uh, a lot of a sort of a, a fibrous plant. You know, as uh, dro uh, drojos ivy. Which has a purple uh, sort of uh, ground uh, creeping plant, and okay. uh, it's quite fibrous. It comes in long strands. You think it can uh, double uh, some rope in a pitch? I think somebody's lost their rope, haven't they? And if you uh, just roll a d4 for me, people would like to eat it. <laughs> Well, it's quite fibrous. Yeah, Three. So you you will uh you'll get thirty feet of this uh ivy, which uh, can be used as rope. Nice. Do you still have your herb law book? Uh, no, I don't think I had it. Did you not have a book? I thought you had. Oh, a book. I had a... Someone had it. I don't think I, it was me. I had a book on. Alchemy, I think, but I sold it and she like took two pages out of it. Oh yeah, but we were in that village and then she took yeah. two pages and threw it in the trash. Yeah. Didn't somebody pick it up though? No, I don't think so. No. I have the book of exotic maps. That's okay. what I have. Okay. Uh then uh you don't know what else it can do. Oh no wait. Sorry, I, I do I do have a book on herbs and spices. Boy, boy, <laughs> someone someone did. Yeah, I do have. It's because it's under multiple books, but I deleted them as like we got rid of them, and so I only have the book on herbs and spices left. Okay, so uh, because oh, this is quite a common herb, I would say that it's yeah, uh, it would be detailed in your book, and essentially, so, sorry, go. On. I would say as a point of reference, all four is proficient with the herbalism kit, so he would have some, like greater knowledge of of herbs in general. Just... Okay. So uh, between you then, uh, you'll be able to identify uh, that uh, not only uh, could you use this as rope, but properly prepared, uh, you believe uh, that you could use it to, to craft uh, potions of climbing. Potions of climbing, now that sounds useful. I thought we may need to do that, hint, hint. <laughs> Oh, that's that's like the an ideal thing for fucking star. My primary weakness. That that yeah. wasn't a hint. That was a randomly rolled herb from the forest table. <laughs> <laughs> it just like it is that it, it is what it is, right? Yeah. It just yeah. worked out very well for me. It's, okay. It's, yeah, it's to fight your own crypt tonight, climbing anything anywhere. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, well, with that, I'll I'll distribute the the sort of the berries and stuff I and the mushrooms as. As I find them, and I'll make sure to cook the mushrooms, and then uh, I'll hand them out to everyone, and ask what what turn should we take watching? I'll go first. 
Two goes to him. Okay, yeah, so good. I'll do the third thing. Duvo gonna do while he's um I'm happy to go last and get up early. Okay, well I'll do the one before Kasara. Okay, is anybody else doing anything before uh you sort of settle down for the night? I'm gonna open Alora's tent backpack and like boom, a tent into existence. You picked up her tent? Yeah. yeah did. <laughs> to be fair, like yeah. she 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 was very much one for recovering old technology, so I don't think she would have minded that somebody was reusing her stuff. Yeah. I'm an inquisitive nomad now with my stupid ring that's the effect in my brain. I want to study study my pole of angling a bit better. <laughs> okay. Have we been through your pole of angling before? I feel like we have, but you, you had we it for have, such a yeah. long time and you didn't question anything about it. Yeah, we had it. It was a 10-foot pole and I didn't question it. And then I studied the pole, didn't I? Yeah. So I'm just going to mess around with it now and get a bit more used to using it. Oh. Uh, In the and... middle of a mountain range, because, yeah. you know, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. So, uh, the dude was just going out pretending to fish in a mountain range. Uh, so, can I get uh, your uh, perception checks for the what? Boom. Okay. Oof. I hope nothing happens in my watch. <laughs> oh, there's some oh, terrible okay. rolls there. Oh, well, do what did the other end of the scale, so. <sighs> That's just for, for my reference. Here comes some private rolls, boys. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, okay. Okay. You are all relieved that you make it round to the next morning without being disturbed in your sleep. Uh, Duvar, on your watch, mm -hmm. uh, you... For uh, the briefest time, uh, against uh, mm -hmm. what is a... Sort of like you've got the half moon and you've got a crescent moon, uh, you see a winged creature off in the distance of uh quite a large size or very very like close to you but it didn't sound close to you so you think it was just large and far away large and far away in, in direction ish uh, i'm gonna say probably to the south okay Okay. It's sort of, sort of flying northeast to southwest. Okay, I think I would have mentioned that to the next person on uh, on watch to me, just to keep an eye out for it. Cool. Okay. So I was going to venture that we should see if we can forge a way through this mountain pass south, but I take it that's probably not a good idea then. Uh, it doesn't sound great. I mean, it was far off, so uh, you know, potentially depending on what, depending on what would it be? Would it be a dragon? I'm presumably. You tell us. You saw it. What did it you see? Far, it was far off and it was winged. That's really all I could tell. I think. Some dragons do like mountains. But then some like the desert, so. Some uh, do. Yeah. It could be, could be any creature that has wings. Yes. It could, but what what creatures do we know that is? Manticores. Large and far off. Manticores. Yeah, I mean, you you fought. Um, uh, do you remember fighting a manticore? No, I woke up in a nest <laughs> without an arm and many toes. <laughs> It was I a do hand. Not We've seen giant eagles before. Well, I can, I can tell you, you fought a manacle. <laughs> um, 
there's no there's no saying that um, there will be an easier place to fall through the mountains than there. No. I, 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 I'm, I'm not a bright man, but I, I would forge through here. Why not? Uh, yeah, I say we, we keep an eye on the skies and we press on. Okay. David, does it look like then if if uh, we can sort of make our way through the for it this would hex? be difficult. Uh, you would travel slower, uh, but there's no like based on what you can see, uh, you don't see any reason to turn back if your intention is to cross the mountains here. Okay. Uh, what you would uh, uh, notice and feel though is that this morning is uh, quite cold, and that it will only get cold from here. So you would probably want to make sure that your companions all had uh, winter gear because you think it would be quite a struggle otherwise or unpack their winter cloaks uh -huh. yep I have mine good wrap Everybody up warm. Have winter clo clo cloaks now. I, I'm going to light a torch as well just double effort <clears throat> oh so did we get a long rest then uh, you did all yes. benefit from a long rest. Okay. Take a long rest. But sure. Well, no, you kind of set off straight away after landing, didn't you? So. Um. Do you mind if I take over since we're not in forest? <laughs> yeah. Sure. All right. Okay. Be my guest. You uh, you traverse the mountains, and I will Excellent. I will pick up the rear. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That way, and I'll just sort of put my hand out in a general direction along the side of the mountain. Mm -hmm. Okay, so down to here then. Okay, a uh, survival check if you would do that. Perfect. You hold a uh, course. Now it's difficult going, and it takes four hours to cross into the next hex. Ooh. We may. It's going to take a while the whole day to cross the whole mountain this mountain range yeah but imagine the amount of time it's going to save us from going around the whole thing yeah okay three is bad right three sets of privately rolled dice is bad yeah it's only been two so far it's one oh. for each hour okay oh. It's, it's, oh, right, okay. it's when they start rolling more and more that you need to then worry. Okay. 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 <laughs> Duvar. I carry on down. Keep a pace. Keep on going down. Boom, boom. Okay, so as you're crossing uh, this hex, uh, you're sort of holding true and you're you're moving through. And uh, Duvar, thanks to to your good survival, as you p pass a particularly uh, sort of narrow pass, uh, you notice something, and that means you aren't surprised for what happens next. You are killed. Game over. <laughs> you aren't surprised. You're just dead. <laughs> you aren't surprised as your head is chopped clean off your body. So I'm seeing if I've got a good... Oh, uh, yeah, that one will do perfectly. Sorry, just uh, quickly, quickly, quickly uh, throwing a map together because I don't have much for the mountains, apparently. Oh. Aha, it's always the place you least suspect. Thankfully, uh, because I've done a load of work beforehand, it takes about three, like, four clicks to put a map in. So please, talk amongst yourselves. So, what do we think is about to tear Duvar's head off? Uh, Only the penitent man will pass, mate. Come on. White Mountain drag. giants. Yeah, yeah. Drag giants is another good one. Um... 
The Attack of the Giant Spiders Part Two. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I have. I actually still have one of their web sacks left. Probably the only one. <laughs> yeah, I think everyone used theirs, whereas I am very stingy. Well, didn't we do some weird shit with them, like causing some weird explosion or something? Yeah, we, no, we pulled the tower down and got fire. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, and that, that was Kassar wasn't there because he was robbing someone at the time. <laughs> Ah, yeah. uh, yes. Hey. Okay, so Duval is... was first. Uh, Kassar was last. Uh, Ulfar would have been but just in front of Kassar. I would have been Trust somewhere middle-ish. Uh, depends where Cluck would have gone. Well, middle-ish puts Cluck in front of you. It's five of us. Middle-ish is funny enough. In the middle. That works. Shock horror. Hmm. Hmm. The law of the median. Yeah, so uh, as Duva, as you're sort of crisscrossing uh, along this path, uh, very much like trying to find a route through uh, of least resistance through the mountain, uh, it's as you cross, uh, as you, as you as the sort of shelf to your right comes into view, uh, you see uh, these. The fuck is that? And I'd like you all to know. Roll that initiative. looks like a spirit. It's very difficult to see in the daylight, but you can see a swirling coalescent with a face. I can't toggle my combat state at the moment. Oh, now I can. Yeah, now you can. Because it hadn't started a combat yet. I told us to roll for initiative. I tried rolling. Slow paladin. <laughs> Fast Spectres. The irritable one or the testy one? Which do you go for? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, starting off with Spectre number one. Uh, 50 feet, that's perfect. I don't actually, haven't seen what these do, so do bear with me two seconds. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, you might be right about Duvar dying. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, so uh, Duvar, you see uh, this like swirling angry spirit uh, come out of the rock face directly at you. Don't attack it. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. That all looks fine, right? Uh, so I have to remember everything about what fighting again. It rolls. Uh, so one of them rolls an eight to attack you. The other rolls a seven. So uh, they come out and they swing at you and uh, they fail to grab you, but you you could sort of sense that uh, it, it sort of like you felt a tug uh, on your insides, and uh, you hey, find hey, that hey. very very uh, disconcerting. <laughs> hey, I would too if two strangers came out of the rocks and tugged I'm on my insides. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's... Okay. I will warn them. I will, I will shout back uh, to everybody. They're some some kind of spirits. And they seem to want to my intestines. Uh, okay. Um, I think my punches do ma magical attacks now. So assuming they they are, we are having problems fighting stuff. So I'm hoping. Do we attack these things? Is that a good idea? They attacked you first. Yeah. They did. Oh, I've got a cunning plan, and it doesn't involve turnips. 
Can okay. it involve turnips? Is there a chance to involve turnips? I mean, it could, but I don't think we're finding any here. I feel like we should. Let's go find some turnips, leave Duvar to it, and we'll come back. <laughs> hey, you're in the right... You're in the right place, which is at the back. You put me here, and that is <laughs> fine with me. <laughs> so come on, Duma. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, I wanted to get through this encounter quickly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then I'll swing at the uh, the bottom one. Okay. Um. Um. And we'll, we'll we'll knock it off the bat by using a key point on um. On um. Uh, whatever it is. Prior blows. Okay. Okay, so we are... Uh, you hit. Okay. Now, did you find out if your attacks were magical? Good question. Did I find out my, if my attacks were magical? Did you check? Um, That's a negatory, I think, that noise. I know, I, it's more of I hadn't I actually haven't checked. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> From sixth level. There you go. There you go. I, I should just ask... Uh, uh, I nearly call you Crotel. Crotel. I should just ask Crotel. I want my attacks magical Crotel. <laughs> I forget. Yes, they are. <laughs> Excellent. For the purposes of overcoming resistance, they are. I, I, I like the idea that, like, like, like in in character, Duval asks Cortell if he's mad at him. Cortell's like, yeah? Like, he, just, like, he, just, he doesn't know. He's just like, yeah, why not tell the turtle he's mad at him? Okay. I believe they are, and they will be. And you're attacking the bot one? Uh, yes, I am, sir. Yep, so that one hits. Okay. And again. That one hits, and it seems to be swirling more violently. Okay. I will... Hey, hit it again. It explodes. Oh, does it hurt? Uh, you <laughs> take 11 points of necrotic damage. Ouch! That's not nice. Sorry, I'm still on private rolls here. Oh, you couldn't see what they were doing before. Oh, I might like this. I might leave this on private rolls and you just don't see anything. <laughs> you make shit up. We want to see what they roll. Yes, you I bet. It crits to hit. I've got oh, one shit. Hit, mate. So I'll let the next one. Oh. Yeah, so all you see is like Duvar uh, hit this thing a couple of times with his staff and it just explode in... Uh, in a horrible wailing uh, death noise that Duvar seems to be uh, sort of like taken back by. That also hit. And I'll end my turn there. Okay. I don't think I can do any damage to these. I mean, but your super sword, whatever it is. I, uh, I, uh, call Cluck over while waving an axe at him. Throw him a wax. Throw him in one. I'll walk over to, uh... I let him take my tether terror. <laughs> tether terror. I'll, uh... Say, do I just swing? <laughs> yep. <laughs> So I've dropped that into your inventory clock. Okay. So he he hands you this silver axe. Uh, I don't think I can actually get back there to attack. <laughs> uh, it should have been from where you were to get to me, like uh, ten feet of movement yeah. or so. Ten feet. And then you've got twenty to get back, and you because you can fly. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I can fly. He can fly. He can fly. He can fly. He can fly. 
Yeah, I'll, um... Okay, roll your attack roll. <laughs> Tether terror. Right, so I'm going to say, like, uh, taking the uh, the axe uh, was uh, uh, interaction. Uh, but Kratel, it will take your interaction as well. That's perfectly fine. That's acceptable. Okay, so, uh, Cluck, you strike that and it wails and sort of like it, it's as if it's about to explode and then it just goes pop and there's no doubt Ulfa just like puts his like holy symbol back into his shirt like he's just like na 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 it's not needed uh, that one's that one's gone I knew that axe would be useful one day <laughs> what, was the other one dead yeah, can't really make it. They are all dead. They're all dead. Okay, all now we turn two of them. It's a deceased ghost. This ghost has ceased to be. I'll go back to Kratel and I'll. Um... I would like you all to make a perception check. Okay. I'll give him back his uh, tethered terror. I'm rolling brash. Okay, uh. As Cluck heads back, you will hear a, or you'll feel the ground rumble and shake. Oh fuck! Quake. Well, don't like being on a, on a mountain when that's happening. It's a stampede. Avalanche. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and well, you can keep angry, the axe for uh, now. More angry spirits will coalesce out of the ground and start to move forward. Uh, Kasai, it will be your turn. Um. <laughs> um. This one coming down towards me, is he like up a little bit or is he just sort of... Yeah, he's up a little bit, but they, they can sort of like fly, so... Okay. I don't really know what I can do. I guess I've seen Duvar hit him with its staff and it's, it's taken some damage so I'm I'm gonna just do what I usually do. I'm gonna take out my bow and shoot and see if it does anything. Okay. For a 14. Uh, 14 will hit. And I'll do 20, 24 damage. You bloody it. So you see your arrow hit through it and it starts to, uh, yeah, there's a angry brooding in its, uh, sort of in incorporeal form. Okay, in which case I'm going to, I'll use my bonus action to put Slayer's Prayer on it, which I should have done prior to the first shot. And uh, I'll do the same thing again. For a 13 this time. Uh, it's a hit. Uh, and that should be... So that will be 17 plus 5, so 22. Uh, it will explode and uh, it'll be a horrible wail, but you will not feel any damage from that rain. Too far away. Okay, uh, and once that is done, I'm going to sort of uh, <laughs> move into <laughs> near where all far is and put my back up against this wall here. Mm -hmm. And that will end my turn. All far! As you're about to put your Holy Spirit away, yeah. you, 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 you feel dread in your very soul. Okay, I'm going to move to this spot here. And I'm just checking on distance. Genocidal here. Spectre, Jesus. Right, okay, and so the, the furthest left three Spectres that are still knocking about, I'm going to turn undead on them. If they are below CR level one, they instantly explode. Otherwise, they otherwise I need uh, a wisdom saving throw. Although that is not allowing me to when I roll it for the sheet, I have to fix that. Um, so the the three to yourself, yeah. Yeah, so there was one one two to myself and one that's slightly north east of me. Okay. Um, and wisdom saving throws, yeah. I didn't. I had my thing in the way. Yeah, wisdom saving throws. I don't. 
Yeah, that one to the furthest west is is just out. So the two that fail basically have to use all their action and all their movement to run away from me. Uh, yeah, I'll say that one looks a bit like uh, a bit like it's turned. That is my action. Uh, uh, that is my action, um, and then some bonus action to Hang on. Uh, da, 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 the creature. If a uh, creature's instantly destroyed, if it's at uh, your at the challenge rating or lower, so because they're CR one, uh, they will both explode. Oh, cool! Oh, there we go. Clear the board. <laughs> Not so uh, bad after all. Everything's coming up all far. Yes. Uh, Move to the holy man, the beacon of light. <laughs> yeah. um, as, because that's just a regulation, a spell. I can do a bonus action spell. I think. So, I will. Actually, no. I'll leave it for now. That's that's going to be my turn. Okay. The spectres will stream. Uh, that one flies over your head, Duva, so you won't get a, uh, what's it called, a tip. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, one flies past you, Duva, and uh, two yeah. fly to you, Crutel. I'm sure I could have hit that other one if flies over me, I can jump high and I've got a stick. Uh, make a acrobatics check. Oh! Nope. <laughs> nope. And you are now pro. <laughs> Fall on your ass. <laughs> you win some. Big. You win some. You lose some, dude. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's just him. Um... Okay, so uh, the two on you. Uh, does not crit and uh, does not hit. And the one on you, okay. Duvar, uh, does not hit. It's good because I'm prone. What? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, you're prone. Yeah. Uh, Cretel, it is your turn, and I would like you to make a insight check, please, Cretel. Yeah, because I'm great at those. <laughs> You're pretty good. You're you say that, you are yeah. actually pretty good at them. Yeah. Yeah, I actually plus... realised I've got quite a plus to those. I should say, plus six is not something to sniff at. <laughs> that, is, that is good. Uh, so, uh, Kutel, uh you saw that the two came towards you actively avoided clock to get to you. Okay. Do I think it's because he's got the axe or because he's Aracochran? Uh Based on your 15, uh, you don't know. Okay. And it is your turn. Okay. Uh, I'm going to explode. <laughs> I'm going to pick up Cluck and wave them at them and wave him at them. <laughs> Just crawl between Clark's legs and hide. <laughs> uh, that is too fast. Then they take up. ten radiant damage each.
Uh, that makes the one to your north angry and swirly. Alright, and uh, that will do for the moment. Would, would I have seen these spectres actively avoid me as well? Uh, Making the sight check. In the meantime, another one will come to. Uh, no, 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 I do not. Another one will come to you, Duvar. You're, you're, you're admiring your axe, mate. That's what you're doing. And he rolls a nine to hit. Okay. It's uh, no. pretty good. And one will float up to you, because I... Oh. Rolls a 15 to That will uh, glance off my armor. Yes. Very, very lucky. Yeah, I read what that does, and it kind of worries me. Duva, it is your turn. Oh yay! Anyway, you missed me out. Oh no, no wait, no, I'm after Duva. You are. <laughs> we'll get to you, Clock. Don't worry. There is one thing I'm glad about. I'm resistant to necrotic damage. Knowing no better, other than he doesn't want to get exploded again. He's going to stand up. Uh, he's going to use, up. I don't know, tiny little bits of movement to stand up, whatever that was. Half your movement. Uh, you are a turtle. You, you, yeah, you use half your movement. You're a turtle on your back. But generally, it's half your movement to stand up if you're prone. But for Duvar, because he's got so much movement, half of that is trying to roll um, over so he's on his front. Tipsy sway. Allows me to use. Uh, you can stand up uh, by spending five foot of movement. Okay. Rather than half his I knew that would come in useful at some point. I think you need to like have a aid memoir that you read before every session about all yeah. the cool stuff that you have. Yeah, I do. Uh, I just need something. That's what I have I, for, I, I, for when I, when I play my character. I have like a, a sheet. It's like th this is what he's like. This is what his goal is. This is what like, how he behaves. This is what his like floor is. Oh uh, yeah, I've got this floor down though. His da his floor is is absolutely down. I've got that one down to a T. It's not a problem. This floor. Um. Yep. Yeah, so the one to the uh, north, I'm gonna smack him with my stick. And get away, get away, get away! Uh, he starts to swirl angrily. Mm, and then I'm gonna hit the one to the. Um, that's in front of me. That one. Okay. What is that to the east? Yep. Uh, you missed that one. wish it is um and i will uh can i what are you doing bo with bonus again do you put yourself in a put yourself in a oh, so for you you can do like anything so you can do as a bonus you can do another attack uh you can do your flow your blows for a key point you can uh, spend a key point to take the dodge as a bonus action. Uh, you can use Step of the Wind for a key point and disengage. Uh, and that's it. Yeah, I think I'll hit the guy again in front of me. Just one attack if I can do a third attack. Yeah, you can do a third attack for free, but you cost your bonus action. Okay. Oh, good attack. And you miss him again. <clears throat> yeah, obviously. You sort of like, as you swing your staff down on him, his his form will uh, sort of like 
split apart and then reform after your staffs like sweep through him. Yes. Yeah, Anything else for you, Duvar? That will be it for me. Cool. Mm. It's about the ancestral ghosts. Cluck doesn't have that feeling. <laughs> he checked to see if he had that feeling and got nothing. Okay, out of thing, I know. <laughs> I don't think they are, but. I can't just go, oh yeah, I want to uh, try and speak to the spirits. Because using insider information. And you go to prison to that. You go to white collar prison. Um. Yeah, as soon as I don't know any bell, I suppose I will uh, attack that one. Oh. Uh, that ghost will pop. And then I'll I'll see I'll go for that one with my second attack. Uh, that one, uh, still alive, uh, but you will see a, uh, a, as you strike it, a, uh, an, uh, like a, a spectral chain will form around it where you've struck it and it seems to bind it. Okay. And that will be it for this turn. Okay. Kiss up. Okay, so, bonus action I'm going to put Slayer's Pro, the one who's tried attacking me. As my interaction, I'm going to slide one of my daggers out in my offhand. Yep. And then I'm going to whap it with the longbow. And uh, sort of as a diversionary attack, and then as it sort of uh, whether it hits or not, I'm going to try and slam the dagger into it because I know it's from a from a dragon and may have may have some magical properties. So I think it's alt click for this. Uh, yeah, I was going to say to you though, uh, your two your bow's not a light weapon, so you can't use. Oh, can I not? Uh, well, you. C you can, uh, you couldn't use, you could, you wouldn't be able to, no, you've used your bonus action, never mind, I'm thinking about, uh, your bonus action, so that's fine. Yeah, no, you can hit, you can hit that. Okay. Uh, uh so that would be do... 1d6, so rather than the, uh, 1d8, if you're using it one-handed. Yeah, I clicked alt. I yeah, alt we've only set, that. Up, only set it up for, like, two-handed. Uh, okay, do you want me to roll another d6 then? Yeah, we'll just roll a, a d yeah, d6. Alright, I'm rolling two for because one of them Slayer's Prey. So first one is damage and second one Slayer's Prey. So same damage, so still 11 uh, for the longbow, plus mm -hmm. two for Slayer's Prey. Yep. And then I'm going to offhand with the dagger. For a 16. And that will do... It's two damage because I don't get the pluses, plus six acid. So it's eight damage. I think that's right. I don't get the plus five, do I? Uh, uh, no, you would because it's a normal attack, isn't it? It's not. It's not your bonus attack. It's not a bonus action. Oh no, no, it's not. Okay, in which case, yeah, it's thirteen then. Uh, it looks bloodied. Okay. And uh, that that is is all I can do at all. I was going to, oh, oh far, holy man, <laughs> help! Ghosts are your thing, not mine. I, I don't like ghosts. Yeah, you can see Orfar just standing with like a necklace with a bit of like bleached white stone on it that's got like lightning crackling around it, holding it up in the sky. 
Okay. But that will end my turn. Uh, Ulfo, it will be your turn. Okay, then Ulfo will move to here, and I will try another turn undead, destroy undead. Do so. There's a wisdom button there for you now. For ev that covers everybody that's currently visible. Uh, what's the range? Uh, Thirty feet. From left to right. Fail, 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 pass. So most of them are just going to go pop. Yeah, boom. Destroyed out of existence. Okay. We got five bees. They, they start to sound like a a, uh, a boiling kettle just before they pop to this. A whistling kettle. Yeah, a whistling kettle. <laughs> And yeah, um, they'll pop out of existence. This is just literally one left. Which, yeah. It's the one on Duvar, unfortunately. You can handle one, Duvar, right? <laughs> um, you killed the special one as well. Cool. So that's the end of my turn. That was a special one. One of them has a silly name. Oh. Cretel, it's your turn. The Yelping Spectre. Nope. Blasphemous Yelping Eminent Grand Despicable. Shepherd. <laughs> yes, it's a Spectre. Oh, <laughs> oh for... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You've been playing too much Mass Effect recently, I, I, haven't you? I have uh, like 24 hours over this weekend. God damn. Yeah, that's why my sleeping pattern's so destroyed. Well, that's one of the reasons it's so destroyed. Uh, Kretel, it is sure. your turn. There is one spectre left. It seems to be intent on draining the very life force out of Duvar. Okay. Uh, I'm going to hit it. It looks swirling and angry. It's gonna look dead now. Yeah, yeah, well. Uh, yes, and it will uh, hiss and pop. And Can I kind of get between Duvar and its explosion? Don't you have a... Uh, it, do you have... it does not explode. Okay. Ah. Is that because we use Radiant? Perhaps. No, no, no it, was, it was just me. It just... It, well, that, that one wanted to explode on me. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. I assumed it was because we gave it... We give it time before... Uh, it, uh, to charge up or whatever because it gets bloodied and then charges up. I'm assuming that's what it is, but... The oh, well. mounting stops rumbling, and all you can hear is the howling of the wind again. I suggest we get moving. I wholeheartedly agree. I don't like ghosts. Yeah. Left I'm, ghosts all, I'm not a holy man, I'm yeah. not a spiritual man. The last thing I want is ghosts. Oh, they're unnatural, and they're an abomination. They are nothing before the strength of the Oh, uh, very natural. Although, before we move on, I will do a very quick, like, prayer type thing to try and put them to rest. Okay. Uh, make a religion check, uh, Kretel. Uh, does anybody else want to do anything while Kretel says a prayer? Uh, they just disappeared now, or they, anything left of them? I'm guessing probably Orpha would do a similar thing, but more as like a preventative measure. Okay. A, a religion check for you, Orpha. Uh, to answer your question, Duvar, uh, there is a uh, like a, a residue where a couple of them exploded. Uh, if you want to see if it's useful or not, I will allow you to make a religion check. Thank you. Which is my worst thing in the world. Uh, well, you're not really worse than me. Nope. Oh, right. you're, you're, 
the worst thing for you in the world is remembering your character. Uh, I remember my character fine. He's forgetful. You all just think to slow to that place line. <laughs> no, he's not forgetful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, just, I don't you, remember you, what he does. You don't think there's any value in any of it. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Uh. Ulfar, uh, you get no feedback as to to whether your uh, prayer has. You feel like it's done. You know, it, it's a good thing to say. It's the right thing yeah. to say, yeah. uh, yeah. but you get no, you don't get no feedback. Uh, Kretel, uh you feel the surrounding area like almost as if it's breathing a sigh of relief. It just feels relieved, and that's the sensation you get after your prayer's finished. Cool. <laughs> it's about time I started using my religion a bit more. Question, David: When Kretel does that, does Ulfar notice the same change? No. Okay. That's all right. My God's even more of an outcast than yours. Yeah, yours isn't, yours isn't an official god in this world, is it, Kratel? No, no, it is not. Although I can believe in who the hell I like. <laughs> you Are say you sure? that, you can you can believe in the who the hell you like until you find somebody who strongly disagrees with that. On pain of death. <laughs> it's fine. I'm... Of vengeance, I would probably try and stab them anyway. <laughs> and then you can just uh, say you don't believe in them, and then really do. It doesn't really matter, you know. Because I was going to start heading off down the mountain. It doesn't yeah. look like this place. Okay. The road goes ever. Don't know why everyone's sticking around thinking about ghosts. Let's just get the fuck out of here. Yeah, and for the moment I will leave Cluck with my Teva Terra just on the off chance we find anything else like that here. But remember, you had a feeling that they were dodging Cluck. Remember. Is that where you're going to, Duvar? Yeah, yeah, why not? Uh, survival check, please. Perfect, another four hours pass. Through it. It's everybody's favourite time. Ba, 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 da, ba. Witching Ooh. hour. Dice time. Private roll dice. Zombie T-Rexes. Mm. <laughs> the protectors of the island. Oh, I don't like that. Why was there another one? It's been five. Oh, Six. shit. <laughs> Oh shit. Oh motherfucker. <laughs> David's doing this on purpose. He's just like, just sitting there, just like, the minute I react, and he's like, and there's another one. <laughs> you are now fighting. 34 elf rangers, 24 orc barbarians, 50 human guards, and, and one bard. Now you've used all your turn on death. <laughs> and a pack of velociraptor. Fridge in a pear tree. Never go. Never go. <laughs> oh, motherfucker. Can you stop that, please? <laughs> You'll okay. see one in front of you with the attack. Comes oh. from the side. <laughs> okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. No, that was an okay. You're supposed to talk after that not roll more dice i can't see any i can't see any dice that we have rolled that's usually no, bad wipes us off the face of the roll like i've got to scroll up quite a considerable distance to uh, find our next roll okay and it was a good 23 as well so uh as you're making a way through the mountains uh you will come across a uh a strange looking band uh and I will put these on a map. But, uh, so I'll put you on the back on the encounter map so you can see them. Uh, but they uh, do not appear, or they do not show you any hostile intent. Are they playing musical instruments? No, they are carrying spears. And you see three creatures uh, that look like. That's it, yeah. Oh, there we go. We're in the wrong order, aren't we? Uh, it doesn't matter. Like, this is not, like, 
uh, well, I say it's not a combat. Uh, they, uh, as you're sort of making your way down uh, one of the a steep path down the mountain, uh, these creatures have seen you and they step out and wait for you to approach and they do not seem to be showing a hostile disposition. Okay. If, uh, will be brave, he'll walk up to them and he'll offer uh, one of his provisions. Uh, they, so to, to explain what you see, mm -hmm. uh, you see in oh, front of... Oh, I'm probably of... right further ahead where I should be. I should uh, probably be up there. It's fine. Yeah. Doesn't matter. So, yeah, uh, so, so you see a, uh, what looks to be a reptilian sort of folk. Uh, chameleon with a stick. They do look a bit like chameleons, only you, you haven't, you don't know what chameleons are. But they are uh, they are bug-eyed bug little uh, greenish fellows. Who I'll are... call out. Oh, Devar, that... are these cousins of yours? <laughs> Possibly. I th they could also be your brother. They look like skinny versions of you, almost. No offense, of course. Uh, what languages can everybody speak? Probably not their language. Common, Elvish, uh, Dwarvish. Aquian, Common, and Dwarvish. Cochrane, Orin, and Common. Uh, Celestial, Common, Dwarvish, Elvish. Okay, uh, they are speaking a weird croaky language that none of you understand. Celestial, Gnomish, and Sylvan, just to speak. Is an Aquian. No. Um, I still offer my uh, uh, provision pack. They the will look over it and go. Now, where's everybody in this encounter? Um, it would normally be an so order. Do, I'm yeah. So Duvas walked out. So I should I should be at the back. Yeah. I'd probably be here at the moment. Um, and then I imagine Clark will be slightly further. Yeah. Okay. Probably something in that regard. Yeah, so uh, what's in the uh, food parcel that you're offering, Duvar? Only the tastiest of mortals from my uh, thing. Some, some, um, some salad. Okay. They will, uh, oh, the, the lead one of them will take it and go, yeah. <laughs> And seems to enjoy it and share it with his folk. Then, uh, as the, like, do the rest of you approach at this time? Warily, I, think... I, I would probably keep my distance. I'm gonna say, like, all four is gonna hang back with Kassar. He's just a bit bemused by the whole situation. It's like, just standing and watching for don't... a bit. Yeah, I'm don't also really gonna trust... cast this. Ah. Okay. Uh, when you cast your spell, uh, Kretel, they uh, that will draw their attention, and they will look at you, and and uh, they look a little on edge at first, uh, but then realise that you're not attacking, and they will settle down. Friend, friend. Yeah. The problem is I can't speak the language, but I can now understand it. And I will, I will try to communicate to them. It'd be like, um... okay, make a intelligence check, Duvar. Ooh, I have some of that. If you oh. want to describe how you're trying to make them comprehend, uh, I may add other modifiers to it. Well, I'm making hand movements, so I, I'm I'm trying to. What am I trying to describe to them? I'm saying. Um, Just saying. don't stick your middle finger up to them. <laughs> I'm trying to get more information about. Uh, well, how do you how do you say that to someone without actually understanding them? Um, I'm friendly, and I'm uh, and I'm, I'm making a, a gesture to say that we're walking down the path, and so I'm using my arm to. To say, you, know, uh, you now have disadvantage on the check. 
Okay. Oh, thanks. Way to fuck it up. No, it's like... You're, you're, you're doing typical Dubai, you're going... Like, talking a million miles an hour at somebody who doesn't comprehend you. Oh. And... And... Okay. Uh... They, uh... Don't seem to understand you and could tell you hear one of them say... What a strange froggy man. Uh, I will turn turn to Duvara and they they think you're a frog. Yeah, I've been call, uh, called worse. <laughs> <laughs> haven't I? Haven't I, uh, Crotel? Uh Well, yeah. they don't. They I'll say I'll sort of Kratel. turn to Clark and say that these these creatures don't seem antagonistic. No. If they live here, maybe they uh, they know where we're headed. One will say to the, the lead one, Hurry, we must reach the uh, settlement before nightfall. We must be in position. I will relay the information to everybody around me. Were they heading in the opposite direction? They're heading up the mountain. Uh, you're not sure. You know they have, well, you think they haven't come your way. Uh, but, right. uh, they saw you before you saw them, and they stepped out so that, uh, you wouldn't be surprised when, uh, when you saw them. So it's clear they, they went, they, they sort of like, they allowed them to be seen to avoid appearing hostile. Crotel, don't let them know that you understand them. And I'll say this out loud in common. They don't let them understand that you know what they're saying. And I'll look at Clark and I'll say, show, show them the key. See how they react. I'll uh, take the key out and show them something. Okay. And sort of as he does it, I'm going to hope that he's kind of drawn their attention and just prepare myself for if they try to cause trouble. Okay, so they look uh, a bit wild, wide-eyed, as uh, as chameleons can, as uh, Cluck approaches, and then when he uh, reveals the key, uh, they will get down and start to prostrate in front of him, and they will say, "It is time. They have come." Brutal. I will relay what they've said. So uh, they will prostrate in front of you uh, for a few minutes, Clock, before uh, the front one will stand, and he will uh, he will say to you in Ara Cochran, Clock, that uh, yeah. it is a long time since a herald was last on this isle. You must come with us. Uh, I'll just sort of say we they no threat. Um, we'll come with you, and I'll sort of relay that back to the others. Apparently I'll relax. they do know a relax. language we one of us knows. I'll relax my grip on my bow. Yes, they just weren't speaking it until uh, until Cluck uh, showed himself. They they will say to you, Cluck, that the uh, the journey is long. Uh, they were on a uh, they were on their way to uh, raid a hostile village of of lizard people, uh, but uh, their mission or your mission. Uh, is much, much more important than that. And they will ask uh, if you're prepared to travel and it will take about two days uh, to get where they're taking you. And they, they will say that they're taking you to their clan village. So, yeah, we'll um, happily come with you. And I'll sort of say the others will... Uh, it's going to take about two days to get to their village. Okay, so uh, there will be uh, some more talking in their language, could tell, and uh, you will hear that they will uh, say that uh, as, as soon as they're off uh, off uh, the pass, that they must summon the, the other parties. Uh, they all must uh, return to the village. And with that, they'll set off down the path. I will let everyone know there's going to be more of them. As long as they remain friendly... 
considering who else we know is on the island, allies will be a help. And by so, the sounds of it, there's a lot of them. I never trust these sorts of creatures. <laughs> racist, Mott. I grew up in the Empire. You made the Empire racist. Oh, racist. It's literally my flaw. He's also a ranger. I mean, they favored enemy is racism to the highest degree really people can change you know could tell go oh because i'll over time it's only been a few weeks <laughs> like in in the actual timeline well actually no it's probably been about a month and a half two months at this point mm. i don't feel like it it's been quite a while because we have been traveling by boat as well, so I don't know how long that takes. Uh, several for weeks uh, you've been traveling. For a full lifestyle change to unlearn everything he's learned in 20 odd years? Not long enough. Okay, uh, so uh, they start to take you down the mountain and you are joined by more of these folk now. Uh, in the time that you're talking, Cluck, uh, they will say that uh, they are uh, chameleon folk. Uh, specifically, they are from the Whitefoot clan and that uh, their ancestors uh, used to reside in this land with your ancestors and uh, they would live, they lived together in harmony. Uh, until, until, uh, and uh, they sort of cast dispersions at the, the humans in the group and then say, until the others came. But they say that, uh, that that's pretty much all they know. Uh, but once they arrive at the, uh, the village, uh, we'll be able to speak to the leaders, the elders. Like a knowledge. Okay, and it's currently, you can sort of at this point gather it's their intention to uh, continue walking through the night. Now, uh, that would be uh, difficult for you, and if you were to travel any further, uh, you would need to start uh, rolling constitution saving throws. Uh, they don't seem to be wary at all, but... Uh, Um, I'll say to them that we need to uh, we need to rest. We're very wary. Weary. Okay, there will be a jabbering, and probably by this point, I would say you've been sort of like joined by a, 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 another sort of five or six of them with a, uh, a sort of a more uh, senior-looking uh, creature. And he has, uh, he has like a, a feathered headdress and uh, some more prominent horns. And he, he actually, if you spend time speaking to him, his uh, skin will uh, sort of like slowly change as he's walking to sort of match his environment. Like a comedian. But, uh, they will agree to uh, to rest here and then say that. Uh, they, they, they must uh, travel uh, quickly in the morning, uh, as this past is uh, heavily used by their enemies. That's fine. We'll rest till we're sufficiently rested and then uh, we'll proceed to move. Okay, does anybody do anything uh, prior to the camp being set up? Or? I think I've I'd probably spend some more time studying these creatures. Don't yeah. particularly trust them. That's a good idea. As, as good as they look. I can't think of anything. This is, um, because um, I was taking such an interest, do I will do the same. Yeah, I just want to get a feeling for, like, I know what their numbers are. I want to know, sort of, if they're carrying weapons, what sort of armor they seem to have, that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, make a perception check. Uh, Dubai, you can do this. Uh, 
Okay, so, uh, you see them sort of like, they, they are camping with you, but they're sort of like staying off in their own group. Uh, you can see they've got, uh, they've got spears. They don't seem to have any armor of any sort. Uh, most of them just wear like a loincloth. Mm. Uh, the bigger one who's joined you appears to be like, uh, the group's like leader or captain. Uh, he has a shield. Uh, made out of feathers, and he has a uh, a big axe as well. And you also notice uh, Duvar as they spend time uh, sort of on their own talking, that they all seem to have uh, quite a uh, a long and uh, sort of accurate tongue. So you see them sort of like grab a few flies or the like out of the air at one point. Anybody else uh, before we go into the night? Would, would we have time for... No, don't worry, ignore me. No, never mind. I try my best to ignore you at all times. I know. It's it's, it's for the best, generally. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, let's go. go yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. Anybody else? Nah. I'm good. Yeah, I'm happy to okay, uh, then uh, order of watch and your uh, perception checks and you all will have advantage for your uh, newfound chameleon folk friends. I'll go last again. Yeah, I'll go just before. 